Do you remember what the rule was? We've got a fixed point and a fixed line and then you've got some point that sort of hovers around and is the same distance from each. Okay, so let's put some let's put some words on this and um, some coordinates rather. Um, I seem to be liking the co coordinates one comma negative three, so let's use those. One comma negative three. Okay, now in order to keep this a little bit simple, negative three. Where's that? Okay, sure. Let's make this equation here a horizontal line. I'm going to place it. I'm going to place it at negative five. Okay. Now, we're going to have a look at more interesting versions of this equation uh, in the future, but keeping it simple first, if I want to work out the distance from uh, this point to this guy over here, I'm going to call this S for reasons that are inscrutable right now and will remain inscrutable even when you find out what it, what it means. I'm going to call this line here L for line. Um, I use the cursive L because a non-cursive L just looks like a 1. So therefore, my equation that's going to tell me what this is doing is going to be PS, that's the distance to the fixed point, equals PL, that's the diff distance to the fixed line. Is that okay? Okay, what's this going to look like in algebraic terms? Well, two points, I've used this like three times already, right? This is going to be the square root of, in fact it's exactly the same square root because I've given you the same points as um, we've used in the last two examples. So it's going to be x minus 1 squared, y plus 3 squared. Did I remember it correctly? Yeah? Equals. Okay, now we've used the distance formula between two points a few times, but now we need the distance formula between not two points, but a point and, sorry, yeah, a point and a line. A point and a line. Uh, I'm going to have to dig back into here, right? What's the, that formula called? called the perpendicular distance, right? Now maybe it will help you, it will assist you to write off on the side here the perpendicular distance formula. It's a fraction. Does anyone remember what's on the top? Absolute value. And then what? AX1 plus BY1 plus C. And then on the, for the bottom you've got the square root which we get from Pythagoras. Okay, so that's the perpendicular distance formula, but what does it look like for this? Okay, think carefully. For starters, A, B, and C, what are they? A, B, and C. A, B, and C are the coefficients of this straight line in what form? Because they're not just any coefficients in any form. In general form, right? Is this in general form? No, so I need to rewrite it in general form. Uh, how many x terms are there? Zero. So I'm going to write zero x. How many y terms are there? One. One y. What's the constant? Plus five, because I need for general form the right hand side to be zero. Is that okay? So now I write it in that awkward form with zero x and one y because that helps me substitute into the perpendicular distance formula properly. In fact, if you have a look, what are the x and y coordinates of the point that I'm interested in? What are the x and y coordinates? They're just x and y, aren't they? Because this point moves. Does that make sense? So therefore, this line up here is going to be exactly what I wrote over here. That's convenient, isn't it? 0x plus 1y plus 5, all divided by... What's in here? a squared plus b squared. Okay. <coughs> Alright. I can work with this, right? Uh, let's simplify this a little bit. I've got, uh, I'll leave the left hand side as it is for a brief moment. There's the left hand side. What ends up happening on the right hand side? What's on the, what is left in the absolute value after you actually simplify stuff out? Y plus 5. And on the denominator, square root of 1, which is just 1. So I'm just going to do that. Are you happy with that? Okay. Now, in the past, we've squared out things because we don't like this square root. So let's just do it again. x minus 1 squared, y plus 3 squared equals what? This is really nice because I have this weird or absolute value here which I don't really know what to do with. But if you square it, it doesn't matter because what you're going to get is positive anyway. So no big deal. Okay. Now, 
I'm going to leave this x minus y squared here, sorry, x minus 1 squared here for a minute. Um, because if you have a look at the right hand side, what happens? Hmm. x minus 1 squared plus y squared plus 6y plus 9. Right hand side? Hmm. What cancels? Y squareds are gone. That's a relief. Okay. You can see I've then got y terms and then I've got constant terms. I'm going to leave this guy over here. That's fine. What do I get on the right hand side? How many y's will there be left? There will be four of them. And then how many um, constants? 25 minus 9 is 16, yeah? Is that right? Are you happy with that? Okay, I could probably make this nicer in one more way if I make y the subject, because I'm used to seeing y as a subject with all of my equations in coordinate geometry. So I guess I will subtract 16 from both sides and then divide by 4. Is that okay? So that gives me this. Are you happy with that? Is that? Marry up with what you expected. What's really nice is you can go ahead, you can pop this guy into Desmos, you can pop this guy into Desmos, we're out of time right now, and then pop this guy in and then just see it unfold before your eyes. Okay?